So Deserts of Karak is an epic sci-fi road trip on the planet Karak. It's the prequel to the Homeworld 1 story. So in Homeworld 1 it says, a hundred years ago, an object was discovered in the sands of the Great Desert. An expedition was sent. This is that expedition. It's about struggle against overwhelming odds. It's about um, persisting against challenges that are seemingly insurmountable and overcoming those odds. Deserts of Karak began as a game called Hardware, and Hardware was a science fiction game that we were developing independently, privately, um, and it was very much inspired by Homeworld and the shipbreakers of Alang Beach in India. So those crazy shit, they run the ship up against the beach and an army of guys come out and like cut it up into bits and we just thought that looked and felt just amazing. We wanted to capture that energy and put it into a game. The thing I'm most proud of is that it does not feel or play like other games. The game feels so different, the tone feels so different, the gameplay systems feel so different. The scale of the fleet combat, the, the speed at which ships attack each other, uh, the importance of 3D even uh, in terms of being on a desert planet, all of those were essential things that we wanted to, to honor in the gameplay. We had to invent all these new systems I don't think any RTS ever has before. We actually simulate the motion and driving dynamics of all of our vehicles. Uh, we, we, we used a lot of inspiration from, uh, from uh, drift racing, we some of the Gymkhana videos and other sources out there. And what we came up with is a way of describing how vehicles drive so you can, they can do J-turns, they can do drifts, they can do spin-outs and 180s. And we can give people that sense of, yes, this is a real vehicle. This is grounded. This is something I could be driving and carrying around the desert. And that allows people to really connect with the, the vehicles in the game. We wanted to really capture that vehicle fantasy so that you could really just love the vehicles and just wish they were die-cast metal toys. You want to get your hands on them and be in the world. Multiplayer features pretty prominently in Deserts of Karak. We were shooting for uh, two games during a lunch break. That was kind of the magical number. Our, our unique game mode is Artifact Retrieval. Uh, and in Artifact Retrieval, uh, teams of players compete for securing artifacts and then extracting them from that environment. When I play Deserts of Karak, I, I'm, I get a really big warm fuzzy feeling. And, and it's a homeworld fuzzy feeling because it has a very fluid and elastic quality to it, the way it moves. And, and when the player interacts with the, with the software, um, things move in a very similar way. We have uh, terrain that affects the gameplay pretty deeply. Dunes can block line of fire. Ships can move up onto dunes to secure a longer range or higher damage. Um, so we wanted to make sure that that sense of, of using the terrain and using your environment applied as well. So something that I feel uh, differentiates Deserts of Carrick uh, from almost every other RTS out there uh, is the fact that we don't have a tile-based uh, map editor. Uh, what we do with our artists is we give them a blank slate and say, okay, sculpt us an experience, sculpt us a world that could exist today. An ID transponder returned the signal. The return signal originated here. That's it. That's what Jacob was talking about. I need to go investigate the source of that signal. With Deserts of Karak, we had an opportunity with the characters of Rachel, um, Intel, uh, you know, the Khan Sajuk character and others, to really kind of get into the experience of being on Karak a little bit more. So the story was something I'm very happy about. Being sort of a signature of Homeworld that uh, we had a main female lead, uh, we really wanted to make sure that we landed that role in a really believable way. And Haley came through and just provided something that was, you know, way beyond what we expected. Rachel Sajet is the chief science officer of the expedition. So she's young and brilliant, and she has sort of two 
um, motivators, if you will. So the first is, of course, the science of the mission, the discovery of the artifacts and the wrecks in the desert. And secondly, she's looking for her lost brother who went out into the desert years before and vanished and, never, and was never heard from again. raise the bar musically by bringing in uh, the live string arrangements and also the recordings in India because you have this you know very uh, authentic world music sound this element of combining Eastern sounds with Western strings through the lens of science fiction and synthesizers was a, a really neat blend <laughs> We have all these amazing designers and level artists that, that freed me up to move on to doing the new version of the animatics. And what we did this time was we moved them into color. We started moving them up into 3D. We started incorporating video footage, uh, camera motions and stuff like that. They still feel very uh, artistic and raw. So animatics here are what we call animated art, basically. It's all about style and um, just keeping it pure, you know? And then, and to do that basically, you know, you could do a nice, a beautiful painting and then try to make a scene to emulate that. But for us, the painting is the scene. There's nothing lost in the translation. You just move the elements of the painting and then and that's basically what an animatic is. Some of these shots have uh, hand painted layers, live action frames blended in just a little bit with 3D elements composited in. It's a whole, it's a whole gumbo of uh, craziness going on in some of those. Well, I think fans will appreciate the flavor, the look, the feel, and the mood of the game. Uh, they'll be surprised and hopefully delighted by us taking that into a new domain and bringing uh, the game down to the surface of the planet and setting it in a desert as opposed to into open space. I think they'll find, like I said, the look, the feel, the mood very familiar, but we're exploring a more intimate territory, a more human scale story that's set uh, on a planet this time. So, a, a nice mix of old and new. It's the feeling that we are able to recapture from the original two games and bring it into this ground-based version of it. We love this project, we love this franchise. This game has emotion, it's got intellectual struggle. You get to map out and, and build out the things you need to surpass the challenges ahead. And the whole way along, it's great looking trucks in a sci-fi setting ripping through the desert. Those gleaming cameras are just so interesting and hypnotic. If I was being attacked by a beast with eyes like that, I'd be like one of those deer, like, this huge squid with his enormous yellow gleaming eye, I'd be completely frozen. <laughs>